the next step in organizing our project before we dive into the actual mixing is creating some buses. And of course we can create buses later on as we get further into the mix, but there's a few buses that you might want to set up initially. So let's check out how to create buses in Luna and how to route the audio into those buses because there's a couple of ways that we can do that and each way has its own use. So let's do that now. First, I'm going to create this drum bus and I want to click on the last drum in this group here, which is room two. And then I'm going to go up to track new tracks. And it's going to bring up this little window over here. I changed the type to bus and I do want this stereo. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to give it a name. We'll call it drum bus. And I'm not going to worry about any of the summing tape or any of that stuff. I'm just going to leave it like this. If you have the pro summing stuff and the tape stuff, then you can enable that here if you want to, but you don't have to. So let's click OK, and you can see it's created this drum bus over here at the end. It always creates the bus next to whatever track you have clicked on, and I had it clicked on that one. So now we want all of our drums to output to this drum bus and not output to our master track. So what we need to do is go to the output section here. And I'll just click on main for any of these drums. I do have these drums in a group. If you haven't watched that video yet, you may want to go back and do that, but I do have these in a group, so it makes it very easy. So I click on main here and then I go to buses and I can see my drum bus. I'll click on that. And because I have these set up in a group, it's changed all of them at the same time. If they're not in a group, then you'll have to go through and do it one by one. So that's very easy. And now if we play our drums, they're going to go through this drum bus. And that's if we want to use our drum bus as the main output for our tracks, because these are only outputting to the drum bus. And then the drum bus is outputting to our master track. Now, what if we wanted to create an effect bus, like a reverb bus, and that's sort of a parallel process. We could create the bus, but we want our tracks to go to the main output, but we'll also want them to go to the effects bus as well. So I'll demonstrate that with something I normally do, and that's create a snare reverb. So I'll click on snare. And then again, we go up to track, new track, and I'm going to change this to bus again, and I want it to be stereo, and I'm going to call this snare verb and click OK. And it's created it at the end because I do have this in a group. So I'm just going to drag it over here right beside the snare. And I already have the output set to drum bus and I want it to go to the drum bus, but I also want to send this snare to snare verb. So let's just go up here to send and you can see I have one in here already. That was from the previous video. I'm actually going to get rid of that. And now we're starting clean. All right. So now we go up to sends here. And I just click on the plus and then I go to snare verb. And now you can see we have some controls here. So by default, it's sending nothing to snare verb. So if I play now, nothing's going there. Even though I have this set up, I want to increase this. So I'm actually going to hold down alt and click on that. And it's going to zero this P means pre fader. So if I wanted to send this snare over to the reverb before the fader, I could click that, but that means any levels that I change here aren't going to affect the levels of the reverb. So I'll have to go and change those levels as well. But if I have pre fader off, which is the default, then when I make a change to the level here, it's also going to change the level there and keep them even. So it is nice to have that off, but there is the option that you can have it pre fader and then mute would just be to mute the send going there. And then I would just go to my reverb here, click on inserts and I would choose a reverb and room. The capital chambers is one that I like. So I would click on that. And the thing with parallel processing is you want to make sure that you have the mix set to a hundred percent, or if your plugin has a wet solo, you want to make sure that's on and wet solo, just basically 100% the mix. And then you can just dial in your settings or this one here. There's some presets for snare and I'll just choose that now. And if we listen, 
you can hear we have that snare reverb set up and only the snare is being sent to it, but the dry snare is also being sent over to our drum bus. So this is a parallel processing bus right here. And I use parallel processing all the time with compression. I use it with reverb, delays, all kinds of different things you can do with parallel processing. It's super easy to do and you can continue to add more and more sends because it creates another row every time you use up a row. And we can adjust the level of this now. It's really easy to do. Now, the next thing that I would probably do in this mixing project is set up my markers for the different sections of the song to really help me keep organized. And you can click this video right here to check out how to create markers. And if you like this video that you just watched, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching for Audio Tech TV. I'm Zane. Keep creating. Fist bump. Thumbs up.